I then call the meeting to order since we've got everybody. Um, so call well, that's 435. Um, please take notice that pursuant to the section 7E of the Illinois Open Meetings Act, 5 ILCS 120-7E and the gubernatorial disaster proclamation issued by Governor J.B. Pritzker on January 3rd, 2021. The Board of Trustees for the Decatur Public Library is conducting this meeting by audio and or video conference. Um, the next item is the consent agenda. So that's the approval of the agenda, approval of January 2022 minutes. And that's it. So if anybody, I don't know if we have any changes. I thought the minutes looked fine. I don't know if anybody wants to go ahead and make that motion. motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Oh, a second. <laughs> well, hi. Michelle, you decide. <laughs> we'll have to go to the video monitor. For yeah. That. <laughs> Mr. Jones. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So, sorry. Hang on. <laughs> so, oh. um, so being seconded, so we'll go ahead and do a roll call. So Sophia? Yes. Carl? Yeah. yeah, aye. Susan? You're on mute, Susan, I think. Oh wait, you are a bit, did you say it? I said yes. Oh, okay, sorry. I saw your mouth move, but I didn't hear uh, it. And then Jacoby? Yes. And Samantha, yes, okay. So are there any public comments? I don't see anybody here. I don't see any and no written communications from the public. We, we did have an email that was uh, uh, you probably ought to know about and I can, I can forward it to you, uh, but it's it, someone said that, uh, were we gonna wait until February 28th to stop denying books to children or uh, would we use critical thinking skills and let children check out books now? And I, she was talking about the mask mandate. And, uh, and I just responded that, you know, we've always had options for people who, who either cannot or do not wish to uh, mask. And uh, uh, we would, uh, and we, our children's, uh, circulation is doing just fine. Uh, so, but you know, <laughs> I, I don't know what else to, to say about that, but uh, it's, it's few and far between, you know, we've only had a few of those uh, emails throughout this thing. So. Okay. So they're complaining that we're going to take away masks or. That no, we're... no, they're, they're so saying, they're, we're, we're they're saying we shouldn't masks. wait till the 28th is I, I think was the. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. We can talk about that later. That was yeah, I've, a, got, uh, I've got it. I've got on my notes for other discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. Anyway, so next is the city librarian's report. Uh, did I even include that in your, no, in your so. monthly thing? I, I don't think that I did. Uh, our, our CERC numbers were good. We had, uh, uh, we actually, we're up. If you look at the total total circ, uh, we were actually up a little bit from 2019. Also, I think we blew uh, 2020 out of the water because we were closed for a while again in January of 2020, and we were you know we were open all this January. So I'm sorry, I don't think I included that in your packet. I'll get it sent to you. Um, you know, but it was a, it was a uh, another month of relatively low um, foot traffic. But, um, you know, if, if we look at, uh, you know, total, total use of library resources, January of 2021 was actually better than 2019, although like physical circulation was not, and neither was, was the door count, so. All right, so you'll send that later, um, move yeah, to- Yeah, I'm looking for it now. Division head reports. So I see Alyssa's the only one here. So <laughs> yeah, everybody's off. So it's fine. Go ahead. So the thing that's most present in my mind right now is we actually interviewed our three candidates who are requested to come on site for the second interviews. So we started with four, and then one took herself out of the running. She accepted a job in Naperville. Um, so we interviewed three people last Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's the first time we've ever done it this way. Because of the employee engagement survey, we knew the staff wanted to have 
more input into um, decisions that would affect them. So what we did was we created a half day interview process where in the first hour, Rick and I met with them a second time, asked a few additional questions, clarified some concerns that we had based upon our initial Zoom um, interview. And then we took them on a tour, a very general tour of the entire building and all staff, um, introduced them around, let them interact a bit. And then I handed them over to three of my adult dedicated staff, two librarians and a library assistant who had another list of about 17 questions to ask each candidate. And they got to spend the next 40 minutes to an hour uh, getting to know this person. And afterwards, six of us, Rick, myself, Carol as a division head and another librarian and another library assistant took them to lunch at Doherty's where we got to see them in a social setting and ask additional questions and just get an idea of character and interactions and relationship personality. And then after that was all over, we weren't done because then I met with all of my staff and Rick also met with them. And then he and I met and we discussed, you know, strengths and weaknesses and if we thought they would be a good fit. And the most rewarding part of this all was at the end of the day, we were all, I think nearly 100% unanimous on who the person should be that we would like to offer the job to. Awesome. So it was a very rewarding experience and I'd actually like to do it again soon. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, it was. And I think they appreciated it too and had fun doing it as much mm -hmm. as I did. And they got lunch out of it, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Same place three days in a row. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you get something different every day. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> one, out of, one out of them was different. <laughs> This was Her. what position? Um, the librarian position that was vacated in December by Tabitha. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I have checked the references on the candidate that we prefer and next week an offer will be made. Awesome. Okay. So since we don't have anybody else, you like the division heads report is kind of in the city librarians report. So we'll, I assume that's fine. Right, Rick? Move on. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> okay. Sorry, and I'm attaching that to an email right now. And I misspoke okay. about the with the years. It's 20, 20, 21 of January, January 2021 and January 2020. We beat uh, both those years with our total collection use. So oh, that's great. Okay. All right, um, reports of committees. Um, PPPR committee did not meet um, due to a snow day. Um, finance and property, Sophia, you wanna take it away? Yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, we met, it was um, pretty uh, brief. We talked about the check register. There were just a few things in the check register that were of note. Um, just um, the EBSCO Industries database, that's just a huge 28915 um, paying it ahead of time as opposed to paying monthly. And so there were just a few larger items there. And then as far as um, old, old business, it was just we talked about the fact that when the grass starts growing, we just want to make sure we have grass. And then the other thing we had was the financial report to the mayor and city council. And I don't know, is that something that we need to vote on as we have to a do whole that board a, or just- It has to be done in the annual meeting, uh, uh, Sophia. I, you guys vetted okay, it, so, but it has, it's for the annual meeting. Okay, so this is just, so the, we are recommending to the board that the check register, um, it's fine. Okay. Do you, anybody have a second? Is that a Carl? second. All right. <laughs> All right. So we have to do roll call. So Sophia. Yes. Carl. Yeah. Aye. Susan. Yes. Jacoby. Yes. And Samantha. Yes. All right. Check register passes. Twenty twenty two budget actuals. Yeah, I, I just want to point out with that that I what I sent the uh, committee 
was a non-updated uh, version. So for the committee meeting, we didn't have it. We didn't have accurate uh, accurate numbers. So, but what you have in this packet is is accurate. Uh, so we're eight percent of the way through the year. Um, we have collected four percent of our revenue, uh, but that's natural because we get you know that comes really lumpy. Uh, we've spent eight percent of our expense uh, of our personnel expenses, so right on track there. Uh, you know, 12% of our materials budget, but that's because of those big uh, databases that, you know, came all at the same time. 1% uh, of our professional services, 8% of our, uh, uh, our allocations, uh, about 2% of our grants, 20% uh, of our advertising, because we don't advertise very often and we have a very small budget, but we had to advertise for the job that Alyssa talked about. 2% of our office supplies slash maintenance, uh, none of our staff development, 8% uh, of our insurance costs, and 7% of our building related costs. So we're, we're right where we need to be. Um, do we okay. picture this year having any staff being able to go to conferences? Is that gonna happen or? Yes, in fact, uh, Alyssa will be going to uh, the Public Library Administration Conference at the end of March, uh, but those costs were paid last year. So, I mean, most oh, of the no, costs- Oh, no, I wasn't worried about the cost. It was just it's nice to actually have yes, people making face-to-face yes. -face time because the thing yeah. is, is when you're doing it on Zoom, you don't actually get to Absolutely. make the connections and have Absolutely. the side conversations that you would yeah. have in person. So I was and, hoping- And that I, that I that won't be going, going I, I won't be going this year to the Public Library Administration Conference because um, my kid will be in uh, show choir nationals in Nashville. So uh, that's where I'll be instead, but uh, I'll go the next time there is one. And I might get, I might get to ALA. I think it's in Chicago this year. So that's a uh, pretty close. Yeah. Is that the thing in Portland? Hmm? What? I had asked if he was referring to the, the, the conference in Portland. Oh, yes, important. Yes. Yeah. yeah important. Okay. And there's still, important. You know, still room. <laughs> okay. So, do we need to do anything on this? This is an action. So, the, on yeah, the budget no. annual actuals, I don't think we need to do anything. No. Okay. So, there's nothing else on that, as far as I know. No other, other business. The discussion no. point. Yeah. Uh. Two really big salt piles outside the library. See, wonder how that came about. Like they didn't, they didn't get spread. It's just, they're just still sitting there. Where are they? Directly in the main parking lot under the, the U. There's like, I assume that instead of just salting the entire parking lot, they're like, boom, here, here it is. I, I, just I don't have an answer for that. Cool. Just, I didn't see it yesterday. I mean, I don't, like, I don't I'm use the parking lot, and I didn't, I, I haven't noticed. So, uh, like, what, what part of the parking lot, or like, right where you in come the, in, or? the main U, so I mean like literally right outside the, the main doors. I didn't see that, yes. I was there last night, but I didn't see it. I wasn't paying attention. see what I can find out. Do you think they put it out there to, did they put it out there today for tomorrow or? No, this was before the, the last snowstorm. Oh, okay. And it's it's still there from my understanding. I mean, I was there just like three days ago, not one. So maybe it's been, yeah, I, I was just curious. It's like, did, did that happen on purpose? Did, what happened because it didn't really seem like anything else got started. Are they are, are, you, are you talking big piles, Carl? Like, Not necessarily. I mean it's like two, three inches deep, but it's just like this big old circle that they just didn't spread the, the, the that's salt. Probably out. that's my guess. That's my guess, but I'll take a look and then see and find out. Not lodging any kind of formal complaint, just just curious. So all right. So foundation, um, annual appeal. It's the same as it was. I don't think we've gotten a whole lot more in. It's it's roughly I, around 18,000. Is that right, Michelle? Does that sound? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, it is. It's, a, it's the best one yet. So I don't remember it. I mean, I know some of it's were ridiculous, but I mean, I, didn't, I don't remember it being that high or, you know. Yeah, but even. Betty Jo says it's all because of me. There you go. <laughs> I, I, you know, and, and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Sorensen also kind of. <laughs> kind of downplayed, you know, well, 5,000 of it's earmarked for ridiculous. Well, it's still $5,000 that was given yeah. because of the, 
it's that was given because of the appeal. So, or at least in response to the appeal, maybe they would have given it anyway. But okay. Um. So, friends of the library, Carl, you want to give that, or did you? Or I don't care. Whoever. Well, it was an interesting meeting, um, much more lively than ours. I'll say that. I mean, I thought we had, I thought we had a good energy going, but they, they got a lot more camaraderie than we do. So there's that point. Do with it what you will. Well, um, they're not recorded or anything. So like. That's a, maybe that's a better. That's a better yeah. story. Um, they sold the popcorn machine or oh. they're in the process of selling a popcorn machine that they haven't used in like eight years. Um, something like that. They are extending the sale of the books and so it's not just the only second Saturday of the month but it's also Monday and Thursdays from 9 30 to 12 30 do you believe oh. um, that's cool they're figuring out a lot of the organizational aspects of like getting people on the bank account things like that um oh, yeah, Rick got cool. anything more to add to that uh, you hit the you hit the big the the, the high points uh and uh, I, I can say I can tell you this that they've had some meetings where the word camaraderie would have never come to your mind. Uh, I've been in some of those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah. But uh, yes, there there certainly was in that particular meeting. So that, uh, uh, but yeah, they it was a. Uh, uh, those are the two big things that they're extending their sale hours, and that could you know really have a. a a positive impact on their revenue. So it's like uh, so it's Mondays and Thursdays, like of every I week. Think or so. it's going to be Monday mornings and Thursday afternoons, beginning permanently in March. They've been doing pop up book sales throughout this month just to see how many people would come and how much they could sell. But we're advertising it starting in March. That's, That's so excellent. Fun. That makes me feel better because we are going to give them space on our floor. Okay. <clears throat> And that was one of the things we discussed was hopefully they would have a few yeah. more sales. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad, glad you got to go and visit and see, you know, see what it was all about. Um, so HLS, Rick? Um, or is that Carl, uh, Carol? Uh, it, it, I didn't prepare for that. I not you. I've got, <laughs> I've, I've got something that I would like to, if anybody is interested in serving on the IHLS board, let me know. And uh, I will get you on the ballot. It is a- As a trustee. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a, uh, there's an election that's held in the spring and yeah. it's uh, from all IHLS member uh, libraries. So that's 400 and some, almost 500 libraries. We haven't had, uh, representation on that board. Decatur Public Library hasn't had representation on that board since uh, John Phillips was the last uh, person to serve. So uh, if anybody's interested, let me know. I'm I'm on the uh, nominating committee this year. So. I got an email about that. I don't have time. I would, I would but I don't have time. Um, so Friends of the Library Relocation um, did you talk to? Yeah, I, I I haven't done my part on this. I got I've got to I've got to get in touch with uh, with Mr. Wrighton, and uh, I know that he's well. I've been told that he's actually shown the space again to uh, somebody. I don't know who, uh, but I need to get in touch with Mr. Wrighton and and see if we can uh, if we can get a meeting to kind of move this along. Okay. Um, next thing is the. State Librarian Performance Review. Um, so I apologize because I'm very not organized. Um, Carl and I did talk to um, HR Source um, and I, did, I was gonna type up my notes, but there, I, just haven't, I just haven't had time. So um, we've received the, the evaluation form um, and this will probably be more in the PPPR committee, but since we have everybody all together, um, kind of one of the things we talked about was reviewing Rick based on what we had talked about last year, like his, our goals for last year, and then determining like a time frame when we would want to evaluate him based on this new criteria. So um, basically, um, just wondering like what your guys' feedback is on that, if, if that's 
what we want to do is um, kind of set some goal, like set some new goals with the, the new um, format, but evaluate him based on the prior, you know, like our prior template, just because it's kind of not exactly fair since he didn't really have any heads up on, <laughs> um, you know, like what this, you know, like this year's new format. Thoughts, Susan, I know you were like, you were kind of, you headed it up last year. So I'm not quite sure what you're asking. What do you? So um, we have this new form that HR source, like that we, we purchased the template for. Um, and so my question is, do we want to evaluate him with this new form or do we want to um, evaluate him using the last year's um, format, like for one last time, and then talk about evaluating him in maybe six months using this new form? We've had, the, we're, we're facing the same question with the management team. Uh, so, so what we did is we did a quick, we honestly, we did a quick and dirty using the old, the old format and just did the mm -hmm. score sort of, because we needed, we use that as a tool for uh, uh, setting compensation. Yep. So um, we did that and then, you know, we're about to, to have the new tool and, you know, it's probably for us, it's probably going to wait till November before they get the, the formal one because, but, you know, I, I, from my point of view, I'm okay with either way. I just want you to have your evaluation um, because you deserve it. So like um, maybe, I mean, does anybody else have any feedback on that? I know Carl, you were in the meeting with um, Catherine, so. For whatever the board decides, though I think it is a little last minute uh, to, to throw something new on there, so. Right, yes. So um, how about we plan on next month? Um, we will review um, Rick based on his past goals. We'll set new goals with this new template. Um, and the PPPR committee can discuss like how far out we want to, you know, like do the, use the new tool to evaluate him. Um, Cause she said, you know, like six months after um, is, is a good very like, or a good um, threshold. So like we would review him based on last year's and then in another six months, we could use this tool to kind of, to do a review. So using the new tool. I wonder, wonder why they say that and not just do it next year. I mean, I think it's just to see that it's working. Like it may not be like a full evaluation with compensation, but, um, and we can ask her, but I don't remember the answer that, to that question. That's, that's our take, Samantha. And we're getting a full training uh, tomorrow on okay. our new tool. But our, our, our take is that, you know, they, they, the six month thing is more of a check in. Hey, let's, and, and, you know, if we do, we need it correct course. Is it, you know, is there anything we need to, to, to change? Uh, I mean, and that's a good point. Cause like she was talking about, like, it needs to be something that you're talking about constantly. So it's not like just a once a year type thing. She gave an example of an actual board she's on that was like, one of the board members was going to ding the, their director for um, not showing up at a parade, you know, and it's like, well, did you talk about it during the, like, when it happened? And they're like, no, I'm just going to put it on the review. And it's like, well, that's not, that's not how it works. Like, it should be constant feedback. So um, I, I don't know, it, it was really informative. And once I get a chance to <laughs> compile this information, I'll share it. I'll share it however I can, because um, it was really it was a really good meeting. Like I've never done any. I mean, we did it last year, but I've never done anything like that professionally before. So um, I took a lot of notes, like I said. <laughs> so, um, so I think the PPPR committee um, will talk about that um, next month. So. And we'll get that evaluation done. Um, she said no longer than two weeks, like 
you know, we give out the form to, to fill out and then get it back within two weeks. Cause that's a good, you know, time frame for people to get stuff done. So anything else, any questions on that? I know I kind of let it, but if anybody has any other comments on it. Okay. So I guess my other, my last old business is masks, or if you wanted to talk about that in another box. But, I, I was going to put it new business, but old business is fine. Cause we've certainly yeah. been talking about it for two years. So yep. it's definitely old business. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have any new business anyway. So as far as I know, other new business. So my, I guess my, my intent, unless you, you know, unless this board directs me otherwise is that as of Monday, we will not have a mask mandate, but I also, I also don't intend to make a big announcement. You know, yeah, I would agree uh, with that. Uh, and, you know, and I, I, I it's, it's dependent. Uh, did anybody see what city council did Monday? Did they lift their ordinance? Well, of course he watched it. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> that was actually me waving goodbye to an office person. So no. oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I mean, I, I talked to the mayor, I don't know, 10 days ago or something. And she said that she expected it to happen. Uh, so, I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to be in violation of a of a city ordinance, uh, but I, mean, I just I well, it, you know at this and I I don't even know what the CDC says, but at this point, I, it's not even a public health issue for me. It's going to, going to become impossible to enforce. That's my that's my feeling, and I, I I don't want to put my staff in that in that position. The the, the questions that come up for us are are. Um, do we allow people to mask? And I think common sense says we should, at least until the, this thing is eradicated. Uh, and uh, do the barriers stay up? I'm okay with the barriers staying up. Uh, and, then they, and then the last thing, and you guys uh, may not even know we do this, but uh, once a day, if you're working half a day, but twice a day, if you work full time, if you work an eight hour shift, uh, we're reporting we're, we're going through a, a, a symptom questionnaire and, you know, that gets reported to uh, your supervisor. Um, do we continue with that? I mean, I, I don't have a strong feeling on that. Um, I think people are going to be reporting their symptoms either way, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I would, I would say that people have been adequ adequately had the opportunity to get a vaccine if they would like a vaccine. And at this point, I feel as if masking should be um, optional. Personal, personal choice. And like personal I mean choice. And I don't think, I think that we should maybe if, you know, everybody's walking in without a mask, at least have a sign up that says um, that we support people wanting to wear a mask. I don't know how you'd phrase that in a nice way, but so that people don't get on other people's cases about masking. And I think that um, we are moving towards an end and the endemic phase of this. And I know I'm, I'm pretty much feeling like I've done everything I can and I'm not so worried about other people anymore. I, I, I also feel like we don't necessarily need to take people's um, symptoms twice a day at work anymore, but we do need to encourage people if they have symptoms to come to their supervisor and say, I have some symptoms, you know, and figure out if they need to go home or whatever. I would agree with that. I, I think, I mean, somebody did reach out to me um, and ask me about the masks and I don't think that we can enforce it. Like, you know, if the city council slash um, like city council slash the state has said it is no longer required, I don't think we can say you have to wear a mask, but um, I would say anyone who feels like wearing a mask, like that is their choice. Like that. And I, that's what I said. I said, like, I personally don't necessarily feel comfortable, especially with my daughter who's not vaccinated um, yet. Cause she's three. So like, 
I'm not going to go out in public with her without a mask. Like she's just going to wear a mask until she's able to be vaccinated. So I think it's at this point, it's a personal choice. I know we were kind of talking about it not being at, at a certain point, like, cause it was really, really bad. Um, but now most people have it and it's, I'm, I mean, I will probably wear it for a while just cause so until I feel comfortable taking it off. So same with staff, if they feel more comfortable wearing a mask, absolutely go for it. And that's why I also think that it's good to keep up the barriers that you already have in place. Yeah. Because whether people feel comfortable or not, at least that's a way of making them feel comfortable without having them have to say anything or do anything or put themselves out there. To the as public. far as our staff, our staff, I think, should be well aware that they have 80 hours of COVID time available yet this year. And if they feel, you know, they may have COVID, then to report those symptoms, because then it doesn't count against their own sick time. Mm -hmm. You know, it counts against the COVID time versus their own sick time. So it's beneficial to them to to be tested and find out if it is COVID. And if it is, then it doesn't count against their own sick time. So yeah. for them to be aware of that, I think is important. I think it's nice that this COVID has reminded all of us that we can spread germs to other people and that people should just be more conscientious in general of what they are giving others. Yeah, right here on mute, by the way. I, I just, there's there's every incentive in place, you know, to to uh, stay home if you're sick, and and you know even more uh, incentive if it, it uh, you know to, to find out if it's if it's COVID. So yeah, I'm not I'm not too concerned about that that part of it. Do you have what you need though from us? Like yeah. I know we're not we're yeah. not voting on it, but no, just I, I yeah I, I I'm not hearing anybody thinking it's crazy to uh, stop requiring masks. I mean, anybody who hasn't talked yet? <laughs> I, I would just say I agree with everything that was said, that Sophia said, that you know, makes perfect sense. You guys, Carl, Jacoby, you on board? Yep. Okay. Governor said it. What's she going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so any other old business? Any other new business that we didn't talk about? I will take a motion to adjourn and then we'll open up the other meeting. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. In our okay. second. All right. Well, Carl, I heard Carl. I didn't hear Susan. <laughs> All right. So we'll do roll call. So Sophia? Yes. Carl? Yes. Aye. Susan? Yes. Jacoby? Aye. And Samantha? Yes. Okay. So the, that brings the um, regular board meeting to a close. Um, so I will go ahead and